All right, so today um, we have about 20 more minutes, which is plenty of time. Couple disclaimers. Okay, number one, take off any jewelry. Um, I wear a ring all the time, so I don't want to get clay all over my opal, um, so I take it off. I also made this nifty little ring holder just out of a piece of clay with a little flower on it. Great Valentine's Day gift, or if you are somebody who wears jewelry, um, I take off my ring when I wash my face, too. Boom, right on my little ring holder. Okay, going to get that out of the way. The other thing that I do is I have super long hair. So for guys and girls with long hair or for dudes with curly hair, I know that's the look right now, I tie my hair up and get it out of my way. Okay, um, normally we put on an apron. I don't think it's quite necessary today, but we can push up our sleeves. Okay. All right. So, um, Alexia was saying, what do I need? So we wanted to have a lidded container like this, but some of us didn't, or maybe you haven't purchased one yet. So there's a couple other options I told you about. You could use an old spaghetti jar. This is something that had Alfredo sauce in it and I just cleaned it out. I can get my hand in there. So maybe you have a bigger hand and you can't get it in there, but as long as your forks can fit in there to keep your slip in, um, that seals nice and tight. So that's good. Another option, uh, this is a container I got a salad in from Rayleigh's, which is Knob Hill in Watsonville. So that would work, has a lid. The seal isn't as tight on that guy, but it still seals and it closes. So those are three options. So be resourceful, just like the girl we saw in the video. She definitely used her resources. Um, all right. So the next thing I need to do is open up my bag of clay. If you haven't opened your bag yet, it has a metal twist tie on the top. I'm using a bag of clay that I had from last semester, so I've already taken the twist tie off. Be super careful on twisting the piece of metal because it can break easily. And if it does break, you might need to get a pair of pliers or something to undo it, but it's pretty sharp if it breaks, so just be careful you don't cut yourself. All right, once you get that twist tie off, you're gonna wanna open up the bag. And what I do is I pull the bag down as much as I can so that the clay is exposed like that. And that way I can get the clay a lot easier than if I was to dig my fingers into the clay. Um, so I just pull the bag down as much as I can, all right? The other thing that I'm gonna need is my wire tool. And after each time I use it, I've gotten in the habit of curling it up. And so that way I don't get it all tangled. And so I'm gonna carefully undo it here and get my wire ready. So you need your clay bag open and you need your little wire tool with the wooden handles, okay? Now again, if I go too quick, um, maybe you just stop and watch and do later, or the video will be uploaded so that you can watch it at a later time as well if you don't have your studio set up today, all right? So I'm gonna take that wire tool, and it's super long. So I'm gonna twist it like dental floss around my hand. So you take it, put the wooden part in between two fingers and roll the wire around one side. Then I do the same thing over here. I take it, I roll the wire around the other side and I have a nice tight little um, area that's less long in, in width, right? So I'm gonna use the tool, the wire tool. Let me do that for you one more time. Grab it, wrap it around your finger like dental floss. And you do it around both. So I've got like six inches in between, okay? And then I'm gonna pull from the back of the clay towards myself. Instead of going the opposite direction, I'm gonna pull from the back, right? Slide that under there. And I'm gonna get a piece of clay about the size of my palm. Now, if I mash this up in my hand into a ball, it's gonna be about the size of a lemon. Okay, this is kind of a big lemon, but it almost looks like an orange, but I swear it's a lemon. Um, so, 
just kind of getting a feel for the clay. Maybe this is your first time touching clay. So just kind of molding and shaping that piece that you cut into a nice little ball. I'm gonna pull up my sleeve a little more. Good. Okay, so I've got my lemon sized ball of clay and I'm gonna put it away from me for a moment because when air gets into the bag, it's not gonna happen immediately, but I want you to get into the habit of keeping your bag sealed and tight. We need the clay for the duration of this semester and we wanna keep it plastic, stage two, nice and workable. So I'm gonna pull up the bag and I'm gonna twist it as tight as I can. You might even take a rubber band or something to fasten it, but for now I'm gonna twist it as tight as I can and I'm gonna flip it upside down and get it away from my workstation. Okay. Then, I'm gonna get my tools a little bit out of the way. I'm gonna take my wire. Your wire tool rusts really quickly, especially if you have little scraps of clay on it. It's kind of hard to see. So I take my tool and I run my fingers through it. Boom. All the way down. And I take off that little bit of clay to avoid my tool rusting. Another thing that can happen is the clay wires can become frayed. I don't even know if you can see that, but there's a little sharp wire that is pokey. I'm gonna actually cut that off at a later time. And that's because I left clay on it and it tends to unravel, all right? So when I store this tool, cause I don't need it any longer, I wrap it around my hand like this and I make a nice little circle. And then I take the wood piece on the one side, doesn't matter which side, and I do that so I don't get it all tangled up in my bucket, okay? All right, so I've got my clay. Now I need my container. And I'm going to open it, put the lid underneath. I got a little water in there from when I rinsed it out, so. Also, super, super important. Do not put clay down the sink. Don't do it, okay? I'm gonna tell you that multiple times. It binds to the piping and it clogs your pipes so the water will not go down. So if you have scraps of clay after you're done working, you're gonna wanna either put them here or you can put them outside. Just don't put them down the sink, all right? So I've got my ball of clay and now I'm gonna start making my slip. So I wanna start breaking little pieces using my, my index finger or my thumb into about thumbnail sizes, <clears throat> give or take and placing them one at a time in the bucket. So about the size of my thumbnail, right? And from a side view, it's pretty thin. So I'm kind of pinching them thin and I'm just placing it one at a time in my container, okay? And I try to fill the container evenly on the bottom. So when I go to mix it up, um, the clay is evenly distributed across the bottom of the plastic container. So go ahead and just start breaking it up. Um, just a heads up, there is still clay and tools in the library, which means less than 10 people have not gone to get their stuff. And I want you to get it, and I want you to tell me if you still need help getting it or making an appointment. So after we get off today, off the meeting, if you still need to make an appointment, tell me ASAP so I can schedule it for you on Monday. And then Juan Martinez, I will think about that over the weekend and, <clears throat> excuse me, figure out how you're going to um, fire the pottery, but I wouldn't worry about that for right now. I'm sure that there is a studio around. So maybe where you got the clay, they would know 
Um, so you can ask and that would be a good start. All right, so as I hold up the container, that's what I got so far. Okay, small little pieces. They're not exactly the same, um, but relatively the same size. Okay, let's keep going. So next week, I'm going to talk about the first project. And before we start making, we need to understand what we're making. So we're going to talk about the pinch pot starting Tuesday. We're going to plan out a design. What do we want it to look like? What kind of texture? And then following, the slip will be ready for use, what we're making right now. And we will start making probably Thursday or Friday, I'm going to say. All right, I'm about halfway there. I'm also looking at where I'm dropping these pieces inside the bucket so that I can no longer see the bottom of the container to the best of my ability. Okay, so I'm at the end of my lemon sized ball of clay, and this is what I have. I'm going to push it around a little bit so it's distributed across the bottom. And I want everybody to pause what you're doing. So if you're not done breaking up the clay, take a pause and look at my screen right now. Okay. I have this little container that I got from Protein Powder. You don't need a fancy container, but I find that it's helpful in putting water into the slip bucket. So I'm gonna fill this with water, but I don't want the water line to go over the top of the clay pieces. I want it to be just below the clay pieces. I would hold it at an angle. Let me turn my camera for just a moment so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay. So yeah, the clay is a little bit rising above and that's tricky for me to hold at an angle above the water line, All right? So I got that. I don't want any more water than that. Now, if you're gonna pour the water in there, you can just pour it directly from your bucket. So I have an old bucket of water, you could use a bowl. It doesn't matter what you use to put the water in, as long as it gets into the container, okay? All right, the next part of this is I'm gonna need a fork. So I'm gonna pause a moment um, and let you guys work a little bit more and I'm gonna clean my hands. Okay, so we have about five minutes left. Um, in those five minutes, I'm going to finish up and show you how to clean up. So if you feel like you can't get the job done in five minutes, I'm going to again ask you to pause what you're doing and watch. So I've got my fork. This is an old fork that I actually took from school. Um, and I'm going to start mashing. Now I'm using the fork to really press and drag across the bottom and the clay pieces that I just broke up, they're gonna kind of stick together at the beginning of this process. And I'm using the fork to try to keep them separate and just mashing. And I'm gonna lower this so I can really get some leverage. And I'm gonna press as hard as I can. And you're gonna see the water starting to turn a murky gray color. 
That's good. We want that. Now I'm getting all this clay stuck to my fork. I'm going to scrape it on the side here and keep mashing. Oh, and a little messy. Now, if I just put a big hunk of clay in water and tried to mash, it would not work as well as if I broke it into tiny pieces. So definitely don't try to do that to speed up the process. And it also is a little bit more messy trying to do that. So now I'm scraping off the bottom of the container with the fork and just mashing to the best of my ability. Now, the reason why we're doing this now and not waiting till the day of the project is because... Once I close the lid to the container, the water is gonna penetrate to those little pieces of clay even more. And today, it's not gonna look like pancake batter. Tomorrow, maybe a little more. Sunday, probably pretty close. Monday, you're there. So it takes time for those water molecules to penetrate the clay. I see a hair in there, I'm gonna remove my hair. And so for today, I'm cleaning off my fork. I want to get to here. So it's chunky, it's murky, and it's not pancake batter. That is okay. That is okay. So I still see the clay rising slightly above the water level. Good. Taking the cover and letting the water do the rest of the work and coming back to it at a later time and mixing it up, maybe mixing it Saturday or Sunday, definitely Monday. And then Monday, um, we wanna just check and see if the consistency has changed. So the goal is to keep mixing until it's less chunky, all right? So I'm gonna get that out of the way, but before I do it, I'm gonna take my sponge and just clean up my container a little bit. I don't want it to be a big mess. And I'm also going to get the spot on the floor that I drop water on so I don't have silica dust all over my kitchen. <clears throat> and what I do is I just take this bucket of water and I clean my tools that I use for that day so I'm not putting clay down the sink. And that's really it. I can just dry it with a rag and that guy's clean. And I got a little bit of water on this tool water. So I'm gonna clean that guy. And my wire I already cleaned. So now I just need to clean my workboard. 